find out more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the title of that song, in case you didn't know, is Everybody Says Don't. So first I have to get this back. Hold on. Coming. So I know, so many texts. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. I've got to talk to some people. <laughs> so everybody says don't. I want to start with the idea of this whole simpl simplicity month. Um, life's contradictions. Karen said it. You know, I want to approach things from a simple approach. But things are not always simple. And there are so many contradictions in the world, yes? yes. How many of you have a life that is absolutely simple and there's nothing complex about your life? <laughs> anyone? Does anyone have no complexities whatsoever? Most of us do not. And I love the lyric, he says, um, grass is meant for walking. And yet, how many of you walk your neighborhood and really try to stay off of other people's grass? Good for you. <laughs> Stepping out of line. We weren't, main, we weren't meant to walk in lines. How many of you, and here's my favorite question, how many of you are inclined to do what you're told not to do? <laughs> I know you are. How many of you, really? <laughs> Only a handful? The rest of you are compliance people? <clears throat> you're in the wrong church. <laughs> well, as if I need to tell you, I am one of those people that as soon as you say no, I got to do it. As soon as you tell me I shouldn't, I should, right? Now, here's what's really interesting, though. In the American Met, right, honey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the American Medical Association, there's actually a thing called positive command brain. The reason why you want to do what you're told not to do is because your brain does not logically hear no. When someone says to you, don't do blah, 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 all you hear is blah, blah, blah. It is a natural reaction in everyone that when you hear, don't do this, it actually triggers something prehistorically in your brain that actually lets you think, this is what I should be doing. I was so relieved to hear this. <laughs> Because I've always thought I was just a renegade. Now I know I'm just normal. I'm just the type of person that I hear no, but I didn't really hear no, I heard do it. And then I heard do it now. <laughs> so the title of my talk today is Simply Put. Simply Put. And when I came up with the title, within a day of starting to work on the title, I realized that the title wasn't helping me and that most things are not simply put. What is that simple that you can be simple about it? The world is so complex. Everything in my life is very complex. We live in a world of chaos. What we understand about the chaos theory is that chaos is actually unity in its most amazing form, in this crazy form. It's really unity, even though it looks like chaos. So to say simply put, I really have to start asking myself, what is so simple about this? But here's the issue. We're really talking about the facts that aren't simple. The facts of my life maybe aren't simple. So I have two stories for you. One happened just this morning. So complexity is, is, is present everywhere. And yet I want to be simple about it. So this morning, my husband and I, very early, like around 6.30 in the morning, we were talking about a specific topic. I was so clear. I had the exact answer. It was so simple to me. I mean, so simple. I couldn't understand how anybody could not understand this. So I am giving him, right? I am telling him, you don't get to talk. I'm telling him... <laughs> exactly how this should be. And he looks at me and he says, you know what, I, I, I don't understand. That, I don't think you're right. I was like, oh! I said, how can you not see this? It is so simple. Let me do it again. He went, if you do it again, I will kill you. He's like, please don't run over the facts again because it's not gonna help me. He said, because I don't think you're right. So of course, what did I do? I ran over the facts again. This time I tried... Louder. 
Because of course, if you want someone to understand you, just say it louder. Because now they're going, I don't hear anything now. And I was not louder. But I went backwards and I went to try to explain it from the other side of the equation. So I'm, and I'm sitting there going, this is so simple, Kevin. It is so simple. How do you not understand this? You're so smart. How do you not get this? To his credit, he really didn't engage. He just kept going. <laughs> and then saying his two favorite words, you're wrong. So, <clears throat> so I then said, you know what? I, th th and here's the really funny story. We started our relationship 28 years ago in a show called Candide. And mostly we got together because we both loved to bowl. But some, and he comes from a bowling family. They're all like big pro bowlers. And so we do our first bowling game and I'm, I'm adding up the score and he's like, you don't add it up that way. I went, of course you add it up that way. So we started our marriage, <laughs> our relationship with this understanding that he does it one way, I do it another way. We do it very different ways, but we get to the same answer. And I pointed that out to him, to which he said 28 years ago, but your way is wrong. <laughs> And to this day, he will tell you my way of adding up bowling scores is wrong, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so now I leave the living room at like 6.30 in the morning, and I walk towards my room, and I'm, now I've decided I'm going to put it on paper. <laughs> Maybe if I type it out, he'll be able to see it. Maybe he's that kind of learner. <laughs> but here's what happened. I put it on paper, and I saw that he was right. <laughs> I wanted to die. Because now I was going to have to walk back into the living room and say, you know what, I think I understand what you were saying. <laughs> so then I walk back into my room and I look at it again. Then I realized we were both right, as I usually figure out in the end. And we still don't know which one of us is right because we have a, a, a variable that needs to be answered. But this, <laughs> but I think you're going to be right. So, yes, dear. the whole complexity of life, you cannot avoid it. You can try to be as simple as in, in, in understanding these facts as you want, but you cannot avoid the complexity and you have to be okay with the complexity. So, my second story happened earlier in the week when I went water skiing with the Drapers, who are sitting right here. And the day before we went water skiing, and this is not going to be as horrifying as my snorkeling story, <laughs> just close. <laughs> Knowing I was going water skiing, I started to feel this little thing of like, well, what if, it, what if you don't want to water ski? What if it's going to feel constricting? What if blah, 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 blah. So I just thought, I'm just going to go and let's be simple. We're simplifying life, James. Let's just simplify it. So we get on the boat and it's gorgeous. It's glorious. And Doug Draper gets up and he, he's skiing. By the way, it's on one ski, not two skis, one ski. I know, right? So <clears throat> Doug gets up and he's skiing and he's skiing this way and this way and they make it look so easy. It, you just assume, oh, I can do that. And so then um, Corrine gets up and she's zooming and zooming and I'm taking videos. And then I said, oh no, Kev, you can go first. So, and then Kevin went and, and he could not get up on the one ski, but he almost got it. He almost got up like, like for a hair second. So of course I'm sitting there going, oh, I will totally get up on this ski. <laughs> So I put on the ski, I put on the life jacket. It was a little too tight and I've already started feeling my claustrophobia. I was like, I need a bigger jacket. So they gave me a bigger jacket. I got the jacket on. Then I got the ski on. And then I'm, you have to visualize this. I'm on the back of the boat, half in, half out, going to myself in my mind, because they were a little preoccupied with whatever they were doing with the boat, make sure I'm not being killed. And I'm half in and half out of the boat, and I'm like, this isn't gonna work. I feel totally claustrophobic. This is not gonna my foot. I can't even get my thing out of the foot. This thing's strangling me, I can't breathe. And I'm about to be dumped into the ocean. Ocean, where, was it a lake? A lake. <laughs> dumped into the lake, and I am going to die. I am going to be sucked in under the water as if you could be sucked under the water with a life jacket on. <laughs> no logic here. 
I climbed, did you count how many times I climbed out of the boat? So I climbed out a few times, kept trying to get back in, and I'm saying, saying to myself, why do I think I have to do this? This is like snorkeling all over again, except this, so. Simplify, simplify, simplify. So I said to myself, and I'm using the simplify, I said, here's how you're gonna do this, James. Take the thing off your foot. Start with just the lifeboat, so life jacket. So I put the, put the ski here, and I just put the life jacket on, and I fell in the water, I went, oh, this isn't bad. Okay, this is good, this works. I'm not sinking. I think I'll probably stay afloat, I'm good. So then I put the ski on, and I'm like, okay, just try to step back in so I get back in. So piece by piece, it starts to feel okay. I was like, you're not gonna drown. And then get the ski holder thing and try to get the little point over top of it so it's there, and then when you're ready, just say, what was the thing we were supposed to say? Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> Hit it. So he hits it and I fall over. About 10 times. And I keep falling over. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get up. I really don't. And I kept trying, but what I realized was, I was so focused now on getting up, I was no longer focused on drowning. I wasn't focused on whether this was gonna kill me or not. And what I really understood later in the week, as I was putting this talk together, was that when I say simply put, the only way something is simply put is if you are coming from the consciousness of a simple mind. Now, when I looked at it and I broke it down in pieces, all of the facts that make it so complex and crazy approached from a mind that simply knows the truth and simply put, I know I am always protected, now my life is very different. So can I say that I can live my life from a simple place? Yes, a simple place in the midst of a complex world. An absolutely complex world, I can still be simple because the simplicity doesn't come from the effects or the facts. The simplicity comes from the already established premise that is in my mind. From the absolute truth, the belief that I have about life itself. So those whose premise of life is that it's a crazy world out there, then, and so it is. Those who have a, a premise that it's a scary world out there, and God, it's, I, I don't know how you can watch the news this week and not think it's a little bit of a scary world out there, but you can look at all of that and still know, as Karen said, that simply put, love is at the center of all of it. It may be the most crazy, somebody's craziest idea of what love means, but it's still at the center of it. And if I can simply remember that in the face of everything, love only, that's what this means. Love only, there's my premise, love only. And then forgive everything as it happens. Because the do it now is so that I can forgive it when it happens and not carry it around for a few months, a few years, a few decades before I try decide to forgive whatever that was. That's the mindset, that's the simplicity of this, our vision statement. Love only, forgive everything, and then the most important, of course, remember who you are. And it's not a religious thing. That is not a religious thing, remember who you are. The whole I am God notion is not religious. Religion is the box that contains truth. And unfortunately, so many people think the boxes are different. And religion creates these boxes, and what we'd like to do is get rid of all religion so that the boxes are gone, and the truth just constantly evolves and flows. And you can choose to celebrate it in any way you want. But it's the same thing. It's still love at the center of all of it. So when I say remember who I am, I'm talking about remembering that I am the love that I only live, and I do forgive everything because I know who I am. I am love. And when I can Step in first, and this is the process we do here at this center. First, you just have to put the life, life saver on and feel the water. See what it feels like. You're okay, oh, I'm okay, it is love only. Look, the ocean's holding me up, and I am the ocean. Oh, I get it. Okay, now, now let me try the foot. Oh, let me try I am God on. Oh, still constricting, let's put that back for a minute. 
I'm just gonna lay in the ocean. Eventually, Rumi will take me to I am God somehow. So whatever journey that is, that's the process. But I can stay in the simplicity of my mind and look at everything in the universe, no matter how complex it is. So Ernest Holmes says this, to return to a sane simplicity is one of the first and most important things to do in life. To return to a sane simplicity is one of the first and most important things to do in life. Now I've talked many times up here about your already established premise, or I talk about it in class a lot. Your already established premise is whatever belief you hold about life that literally lives you. If you are a fearful person, that's your already established premise, the world is a scary place. And that lives you. And everything comes at you from that perspective. I was listening to a TED talk this week and they were talking about the mind and how people come at understanding from an already established premise. So that we look at the, the Hillary Rodham Clinton thing this week with her emails. One side of the aisle is gonna come, from it, come at it from a, she should be prosecuted, and the other side of it, it's gonna come at it from, no, it was just an, an innocent mistake. Same facts, the same facts. But you are going to see things from whatever already established premise you have conceived for yourself. So here's the job. The job is to have your already established premise be one thing, love only. If your already established premise is love only, and that's the simplicity with which you live life, then you can, in a very impersonal way, take it all in, hear it all, watch it. Don't be afraid to look at the news. Don't be afraid to watch what's going on in the world because you coming from love only, you are adding something to that scenario that it needs a loving heart that is not condemning and is not allowing it to take you off principle. And the principle is love only. So that's the whole thing. If when I say simply put now, it's not about simply put, here's what the facts mean. It's I need to put things in a simple form. And that's what I would invite you to do this month. Simplifying your life is less about going out there and simplifying all the facts, because guess what? you may not be able to simplify the facts. Because how many of you have facts going on that you're not in control over? Many of us, you know? There are many things in my life that I am not in control of. I know, hard to believe. <laughs> Very hard to believe. Actually, not many, but, but I do know this. I'm in control of my mind when I am. And when I'm not, all of that takes control of me. Do you ever feel that? You know what that feels like, right? You know when your life feels like it is living you. All this stuff is living you. And yet in an instant, simply put, you can put it to bed by just knowing the truth of who you are. That's what our vision statement is all about at this center. It's not just this lofty, sweet group of words that Karen wrote a beautiful song to. It's not. It is a way of living. You love only, forgive everything, and remember who you are, and you have created the simplicity in your mind to be able to look at anything, and I mean anything, from that viewpoint. So as you go through this month, give yourself the opportunity, give yourself the gift of really viewing your life, seeing your life from a centered place of knowing who you are, from a centered place of coming from love and coming as love. You know, religion, this, this, this thing called religion, there's been a joke around here about us calling this not church, yeah. right? So that, so that the people have a, who have a problem with church would find a place. But I actually thought about that and I thought, but what about the people that like to go to church? So I've just knocked them out of the box because we're not church. Same thing. How about if it's just a place to celebrate you? You know, a place for us to celebrate. That's more simple. Now it's a place that celebrates love. You can call it church. You can call it a party. <laughs> you can call it a Broadway show, as many of you call it sometimes. <laughs> you can call it anything. The world is gonna consistently tell you what you shouldn't do. 
The world is going to consistently give you rules to live by. The world is going to consistently cross, put lines on the ground for you to stay behind. And as the song says, as Stephen Sondheim writes so brilliantly, it's up to us to recognize lines are there to be crossed, to step to the other side and say something new. But they have to be crossed from love, not from anger. They have to be crossed from love, not from fear. They have to be crossed from a place of certainty, not a place of possibility or, or, or fearful hope. Um, when I was looking at the, the twins' eyes and looking into their face, even though they were a little fussy, I could see that I, there was this moment in my head, I didn't say it because I was in the midst of doing that, but there was a moment in my head that I, I could almost feel the subtext of, let's move on with this, we already know our name. I know you all want to make a big fuss, but we're, we're ready to live. We know our name, and I want a bottle. I think that's where we are. All of us. Every single one of us. You know, you're sitting here today because we come together to celebrate something. And you're also sitting here today because we all still have so much to learn. There's so much more to learn about this thing called the mind not this thing called God. I don't think there's any more to learn about God. I don't think there's anything to learn about God that you couldn't find out if you looked in the mirror honestly. But I do think there's more to learn about the way we get to use our minds. And that's really where I wanna put my focus. How can we live this science, this teaching? How can we live this philosophy? I was grateful when I found out that there is something in me that's always going to want to do what I'm told not to do. You know, it's a knee-jerk reaction. But I have the sense now to give it a little pre-thought before I just jump. That's learning how to use our minds correctly. So here you are, second week of a month of simplicity. And simply put, go back to basics. Go back to the beginning. Go back to just loving. In every instance, the appropriate answer will be love. In every instance, the appropriate answer will be love. So what I know for each one of us today, in the face of a, a world that sometimes looks like it's falling apart, a country that sometimes looks like it's completely at odds, I know that there is that within us, like those children, that is innocent, that is ready and willing and spontaneous, that wants to live and be excited about living, that doesn't care about what everybody around them is doing. They just want what they want when they want it, and they want it now. I am like that too. And what I want is a world that does work for everyone, not because you're doing it my way, but because there is a world that we live in that can work for everyone. And the only way it's gonna be able to work for everyone is if we do love only. And if we do forgive everything. And if we do not only remember who we are, but we remember who they are. Every single person on this planet. And when we can do that, and we can teach that, and we can example that and show that in the world, and more people want to get on board with living that kind of life, this world will make a ripple that turns into a wave, that turns into a, a movement, and that turns into a way to live life where we all live happily ever after. Namaste.